three, two, one, and that's the buzzer. Team Orange defeats Team Black by a score of 21 to 19 to win the championship. And what a journey it's been for Ben So on Jackson Fox. On the other end, a heartbreaking loss for Thomas Costa and Team Black. Years later, years go by, and Thomas Costa still cannot forget the loss to Team Orange. Oh, it hurt for sure. I don't remember much about that game, but one thing I do remember is the shirt we got after that game with one big bold word on them. Finalists. Season after season, Thomas Costa continues to come nowhere close to possessing the trophy he so desperately desires. Over the course of my recreation career, I've been a part of many teams with many great players. The earliest I can remember was when I was on Team Black with Tyler Landock and Gordon Billings. Next, I was on Team Red with Jonathan Degala. This was by far the worst team I've been a part of because we probably only won around two games. But all that changed when I met one man, Benjamin Pacheco. Benjamin Pacheco changed my recreation career. He alone took our team to greatness. The first time I was on his team was with Team Pink. Ben and Luke Deldeo crushed it all year long. However, we were one game away from going back to the championship, and we lost. But next year, something changed. We acquired Ryan Poland and Madden over the summer. Then we became the gray team. Many people tell me to inform them on what Tom did to carry his team to win a championship in that one rec year. And I tell him, it was his defense. It was unbelievable. Like, if he was defending you and you caught the ball, you probably had a 0.5 second chance to put a shot to shoot the ball or pass the ball. Because in 0.5 seconds, Thomas would steal that ball. He was just a beast. And if you tried to shoot on Tom, Instantly blocked. Instantly. It was unbelievable. And during the regular season, he just carried his team. It was unbelievable. He broke all the ankles, hit all the threes. I don't even think he missed one three that year. It was unbelievable. Then on defense, again, just a beast. No one, no one can, can even come close to what Tom did that year. It was unbelievable. And then many people tell me to rank Tom on the all-time list. And I say, number one. Have I ever seen Thomas and Michael Jordan 1v1? No. Because Michael Jordan was too scared to 1v1 Thomas Costa. That's how good Thomas was. And, you know, Kobe Bryant, known, he was known for his athleticism and defense he was a nobody compared to Thomas Costa that's how good he was and I'm just happy that I got to see that with my own with my own eyes it was really unbelievable that year Benjamin Pacheco Thomas Costa and Ryan Pullen just blasted over other teams with their offensive powers. Absolutely no one could stop them. That year was very special to us. We had so much firepower, and as a team, we knew from the start that this year was it. We were going to win. They did. Over the season, Team Gray obliterated their opponents. Benjamin Pacheco with the tough layup. Tom from way downtown. Ryan Pullen grabs his 15th rebound. And they do it. Just like that, Team Grey is going to the Recreation Finals, baby. It was a great game. But one dull moment from that championship game was at the very end. We were up by two against Team Maroon, led by Nathaniel Sama. Our brilliant coach, Mr. Pacheco, drew up a play for Ben on the inbounds to break away from the def uh, defender and run out the clock. Seconds later, Ben made a very legal move. He broke away fr and got the ball. Then the ref blew his whistle. Nathaniel Sama misses the first shot, although he makes the second shot, and now it's a one-point game. With three seconds left on the clock, Nathaniel's team becomes desperate for a big play. 
The inbounds was rolled to half court for Nathaniel to take the last shot. But that never happened. The inbounds was screwed and the ball ran out of bounds. Delight ran through the veins of Thomas's entire team and all you could hear was joy and excitement. And with time running out, Benjamin Pachigo inbounds the ball to Thomas Costa's hands. And within seconds, they were champions. Confetti falls everywhere, and man, what a scene it is. Years after Thomas Costa won his first and only recreational championship, he decided to officially retire, mainly because he was too old to play. Then, in the spring of 2019, he discovered that his former coach, Mr. Pacheco, was putting together an all Tiverton team. When Adam and I signed up to do this, we were way behind. Apparently, the other kids have been playing in this league for years, so, yeah. Throughout the season, Thomas Costa was highly underrated. Although he sat mostly on the bench, he got playing time. But when he was in, he made every moment count. With Tom, the team was better. Well, kind of. We only won a couple of games that season. However, there were only three teams. There was South Kingstown, Coventry, and some other team. Whenever we faced South Kingstown, Jonathan would always pop off for three. But this isn't his documentary. As the season ended, Thomas and his team only had one thing left to do, the Cape Cod tournament. Heading into this, they had no idea what to expect. Their first game was a night game, and they went up 2-0 to zero right off the bat. And then they made three-pointers, crazy layups, and... They even came close to Duncan. Unfortunately, this did not set the tone for the tournament, as Thomas Costa and his team had an early exit. After losing in the tournament, I didn't know what to do, so I did the only thing left to do, train, and spend the rest of the night in the inside water park. As I trained, I also played street ball with people who would shape my career forever. One person who helped me the most was Adam Costa. Me and Thomas? <laughs> Our rivalry goes way back, ever since that fateful day when I bested Tom in the race to escape from our mother's womb, embarrassing him by a huge one-minute margin victory. This historic moment began our legendary rivalry, in which we competed in many fierce and legendary battles throughout our entire childhood. You know, as far back as I can remember, me and Tom have been fierce competitors in everything we've ever done. Whether it was wrestling, fighting, or basketball, there was nothing we wouldn't do to get that one up on each other to prove who was the best. And although we've managed to split most battles, there was always one thing he would continually demolish me in. Basketball. We always played 1v1s, and although I tried my hardest every time, closest I ever came was when I lost to Tom by 30 points. From a very young age, I could tell that Tom was a generational talent, as he could dunk a basketball by the time he went into fourth grade. Tell me, who's a person you'd think could do that? No one. No one, okay? You know, I remember one particular moment in the summer of eighth grade. We were playing 1v1s at Ben Pacheco's house, and to everybody's surprise, Ben managed to score 20 straight shots on Tom, making it game point, 20-0, to zero. and it looked over for Tom for the first time in his career. That is at least until Ben said one thing that changed the course of the entire game. He said to Tom, you can't guard me. A fire instantaneously lit into Tom's eyes, and he played the rest of the game with such passion that anybody who witnessed it was in pure amazement. The very next play, Tom blocked Ben's shot into the street and continued to dominate the game, nailing threes and dunking all over Ben, and it was clear he had no chance to win the game. By the time it was over, Tom hadn't even broken a sweat, yet he proved to all of us how dominant he truly was. From that moment on, it was clear. Tom had the level of skill and competitiveness to make it to the NBA, and quite honestly, Michael Jordan and LeBron James, none of them could even dream to be the greatness that is Thomas Costa. Years of hard work and intense training had shaped Thomas, but one pickup game specifically in early June would stick with him forever. Game to 11, half court, Tom versus Adam. Adam started out with the ball. He drives down, and man, he throws it down. Wow. With Adam up 8-0 now, Tom had to break ankles, make threes, and eventually tie the game up. Tom knew he had to play great D in order to win the game. And with a quick first step, Thomas is able to seal the win and throw it down on Adam. After the Cape Cod tournament, 
Thomas thought he had nothing else to do but train for the big leagues. Well, that actually wasn't the case at all. A new recreation center opened up, a magical place called Longplex. That summer, I found out my former coach, Mr. Pacheco, was leading and coaching a team to compete in the Longplex Summer League. So, of course, I signed up. And I'm so glad I did because our team was stacked. We had rec legends in Ben Pacheco and Benjamin Sella. We had Ryan Poland, who led the team in rebounds. And, of course, we had Connor, the speedy three-point maker. That team did not disappoint. Over the summer, they played with intensity. But that did not help much at the start. Leads were blown, and games were lost. The first game will stick in my head forever. That game, I reopened a large cut on my arm, so naturally a ton of blood spilled from it. But I wasn't subbed out. I had so much blood on my hands that when I slapped the ground, two bloody handprints remained. Late in the fourth quarter, Thomas has yet to be subbed. Coventry brings the ball down the court. Tiverton is down by two. The ball came loose and Thomas dove. The struggle for the ball became so intense that Thomas's open wounded arm was gushing blood. When I was down there to get the jump ball, I was so furious that I didn't know I actually won the jump ball. Instead, I got up with the blood red basketball, slammed it on the ground, right in front of the ref, boom, technical foul. Coventry eventually went on to make the game-winning free throw. And guess what? Tiverton lost. Weeks went by, and Tiverton A was 2-5, and five, second to last in the division. Then something changed. They won, then they won again, and then they won again, and then they kept on winning. But one game in particular stood out for Thomas Costa. The game he popped off. Every team had one week in their schedule where they would play two games on one day. The first game I played that day was against a very young Portsmouth team. That game, I couldn't be stopped. I had a career high 12 points, don't judge. It was amazing. I scored three after three. In total, I went four from nine from the distance. And Portsmouth being very young, they were terrible. We blew them out. The season went on and on, and Tiverton kept winning. They were doing so well that they made it to the conference championship game and their opponent was no other than the Tiverton B team. They were absolutely loaded with talent. At point guard, they had Logan Bouchard, who could make any pass in the world. Nice pass. They also had Tristan White, who had impeccable defense. And lastly, there was Nick Riley. Everyone was scared of this kid. Hello, thank you for having me. So, I heard that you guys wanted me to talk about Thomas Costa. I believe it was uh, the summer of uh, 2019, Summer League. I remember walking in that day. Randomly, there was just thunder and lightning. Got a little bit scared. Then I look at the entrance. See a man. Nay, nay a god walk in. Thomas Costa. Remember that game? Pulling up in transition for three. I was a center, so I was trying to protect the paint. Because I thought, you know what, we can let him shoot. Just don't let him drive in and get the two points. Well, you know, layups are pretty easy for him. But he shoots those threes just like as if they're layups. I'm like, how can we stop him? The answer was, you simply can't. Simply can't. How about his shooting? That's a good question. I mean, the form. I mean, the two hands. I mean, people would be like, Who's, who, why would you shoot with two hands? I like to think it's going to be double the accuracy, double the power. I mean, double the everything. And that was, that the shop's wet. Surprised that Drake hasn't even dropped him. But I think that the part that I most feared about his game might be his dunking. I remember playing one-on-one -on -one in my driveway. Checked up the ball. One, two, he was about to dunk on you. Remember one time, just he 360 windmill that stuff on me. Tried, tried to block it. Almost lost my life that day.
but it was just so beautiful that I couldn't die. I said, I, I, I need to witness more. I mean, not, and this, that's only half the floor. Man is a dominant on the other side of the floor. On defense, his stance, the stance, the, the, the airplane stance. I mean, how do you expect to get by him? Because you know you're not going to drive. You know that if you try to shoot it, he's just going to block it. He covers up too much ground. I, you know, people like to remember Ch uh, LeBron's chase down block for maybe being the greatest block of all time. And I say, hold up, hold up, hold the phone. I know a man by the name of Thomas Costa. I mean, I remember he, he dunked it. He, like, yammed it on someone. Then they try to go quickly inbound it. They sprint down the floor. Want to know who's there? Thomas Costa. And, and you know, he's, that kid was like the, the Kembe, I mean. Put it off the backboard, I mean. You couldn't get by him without getting blocked. And then, no, no, you weren't scoring. I mean, kids different, kids different, got potential. In high school, you know, freshman year, I was sitting on the bleacher, and, and he was on, in the corner. I passed it to him. Bang. Three points on the board. I mean, even when he was playing that game, the other team scored maybe six points while he was in. I mean, he put the clamps on. If I were to show him, uh, the best representation I could give him is in 2K, probably being a pure slasher, lockdown, shooter, playmaker, 99 everything, Hall of Fame everything, and then gotta upgrade that. Like, is there something past Hall of Fame in 2K? Like, uh platinum like platinum clutch shooter i mean he's making buzzer beaters as if like every game it was just amazing and i i have the privilege of saying that i was on his team and as a competitor i hate going up against him tiverton b was winning the entire game but then a miracle happened told him to steal cheeks for three yes ben grabs the rebound but then passes out to adam but then passes out to tom for three and it's good and just like that, Tiverton A comes from behind to win the conference finals. Now, they're heading on to the championship. And just like that, I was back in the championship. I was so nervous because the team we were facing, the Fireballs, had my former rec teammate, Gordon Billings. Gordon carried that team, but our team had skill and depth. So that game was as good as ours. The game started, and Tiverton got the jump ball. And the game was pretty slow at first, but Tiverton was winning. But then, everything changed. Thomas checked into the game, and Tiverton's opponent's jaws dropped. Tom picked up the ball down low, and then he put oh, it in. Oh, oh, oh. Those two points, and that basket may have been the only points that I scored that day. But it meant the world to me. No one can take those points away from me. The end of the game is near and Tiverton is up 20 points. Gordon fouled out of the game and that was it. Thomas Costa and Tiverton Team A were champions. was amazing. I reunited with my friends and some previous teammates such as Ben Sella, Adam Costa, and Ryan Poling. But my favorite part is that practice. In, in one of his soccer games, Connor tore apart his arm. And this forced him to be sidelined at practice with me for a while, and it was great. When it came to unity, that is something the team did have. Although it only helped on the court every now and then. We only won our first game by a small amount, but hey, we were 1-0. Games went by, and I was never put in unless we were terribly losing, or on the rarest of occasions, winning by a large amount. However, I never scored. I only racked up assists and a few rebounds. But in one of the practices, something developed. 
Ben Soa and Thomas Costa had perfected the art of passing. They became Hall of Fame dimers. Each and every time they were on the court together, they passed it and got assists. Mainly Tom to Ben. The name Tom Costa, that brings me back. Back in high school, we were on the same team. Basketball, that is. Perhaps the greatest player that I've ever seen. When Tom was on the court, it was all game. 100% effort, 100% intensity. There was no messing around. If Tom saw you messing around, you were done. Cut from the team, right then. Even the coach was scared of him. We had these drills back in high school on the, during practice where you got to volunteer to go against one-on-one -on -one and another player. Tom was up. No one raised their hand. They were scared of him. Everybody was scared of him. There was, you, could, you couldn't stop him. On offense, the man was a beast. You thought he was going one way, he went the other. You thought he was stepping back, he was rushing you. He was going past you. And you just couldn't keep up with his sheer quickness. And the same problem was on defense because the man was 100% effort. Nobody could get past him. He didn't, he didn't let you get past him. It was pure willpower. You try to take a shot, he'd jump up and block it right then. You couldn't score on him. I think that I think only three points were ever scored on him. And that's when he tripped. Because, you know, someone had fallen there earlier and spilled water, and he fell. That was the only time anyone has ever scored on him in practice. The man was unstoppable. He must have dropped, I think, 40 points of practice, no matter who he was playing against. Let it be the center, as if he could stop him. Point guards, dribbled right past him. The man has handles, let me tell you that. I'd compare him to a basketball player, but there isn't anybody in the NBA that's even worthy of being compared to Tom. The man was a legend, a beast. During the games, it was even better. He didn't let up a single point throughout the entire season. His defense was impeccable. I mean, he could shuffle his feet faster than most kids can run. He'd get back on D before anybody else. He'd steal the ball more times than I can count, per game. It was amazing just to be able to watch that. His offense was no different. You got him the ball, it was guaranteed that he'd score. The other team didn't even play defense on him. They just watched. We all just watched. We were captivated by his pure skill. Tom was on the court, all eyes were on him. Doesn't even anybody else get the ball. No one cares, because either Tom would steal it or they pass it to Tom. It's, it's, he'd get the ball either way. Now, the, the most impressive thing about his entire basketball career would have to be his shooting ability. Out of this world. That man was knocking down threes left and right. I can remember a game. We were up by a considerable amount, but my coach never let up. So Tom was still in, dropping points left and right. And there, were, I think there were, there were five seconds left. And they put their best player on Tom. They, were, they, they, they thought they could stop him. They thought, he's not scoring another point. Well, they were wrong. Four seconds left in the game. Tom's in the very corner. Arguably the hardest three to hit. Boom. Knocked down. Nothing can stop the man. He's a monster on the court. And he's a monster somewhere else, too. The most time I ever got in a high school game was against Portsmouth High School team and Jackson Fox. They blew us out by close to 60 points. We traveled to many different schools, such as Bishop Hendrickon and Stang. Although we never were really a good road team, we made up for at home, and we ended up clinching a playoff berth as the seventh seed in our conference. Tiverton won and lost, but on one fateful day, the impossible happened. A terrible school called Rocky Hill came to play us at home. Our starters played so well that I played in the second half. This was my game. I knew I was going to get the ball and score. And with seven seconds left on the clock, I inbound the ball to Amari. He passed it right back to me for the wide open corner three. And I shot it. Five. Four. Three. Bang. I was a legend. 